Okay, so when you go up, there's a zip on the ground. Just pull the zip. Okay. Ooh, look at this. Is it bad that the first thing I think of is pole dancing when I see this? <laughs> also. Yeah, that is bad. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of A New Normal. This week, we're looking at travel and the environment. Lockdown has brought about a lot of changes, which has made us rethink the way that we travel and the impact that it has on the environment. I did a call out and I asked viewers what their hopes are looking forwards, and we were overwhelmed with responses. So many people have got in touch. This is obviously something that people care loads about. And I hope that in this video, we'll be able to look at the way attitudes are changing, uh, what people are adapting about their behaviors and what it is that we can do to protect the environment moving forward. On the one hand, I'm glad to be forced to reduce my personal emissions. On the other hand, I feel antsy and I'm still dreaming of my next trip abroad. It has been difficult re reconciling my love of traveling and my intention to stop flying. I believe visiting and experiencing other parts of the world is an incredibly valuable thing. This pandemic has taught me to explore new ways of traveling and exploring options for safer travel practices. I would like to go back to the 80s when flying was a privilege respected by all who used it. Before cheap travel ruined it, it was really hard work to take the kids away to Spain and we could not afford it every year, but it was really special when we did. More expensive flights would reduce the amount of pollution with less planes. We keep hearing about the dangers of pollution, but nobody wants to give up anything. This person says, get rid of cheap flights, but I don't think that will ever happen. Isn't the problem that you then have these rich people that just pay for the right to go everywhere. They're paying to live a much fuller, bigger life. And, and if you don't have the money to afford that, then you're stuck wherever you are. Ideally, we would create a more equal system whereby people were given a five-year carbon budget that couldn't be bought, sold or transferred. Environmental damage shouldn't be a privilege that some can afford to buy. If flying massively damages the earth, you shouldn't be allowed to be like, well, I'm rich, so I get to do that more. That doesn't make any sense. Travel and going away makes people feel like they're more in control. It gives them space to breathe. There's, you know, elements of it can help your mental health. But I guess the point is finding alternative ways, alternative things to do that create that same feeling and allow you to feel, um, you know, stimulated, excited that you're in a different place whilst not having to get on an aeroplane. I think that's the main thing. And that requires a bit of imagination. It didn't take a huge amount of imagination to jump in a car and go to the secret campsite in Sussex. This campsite in particular focuses on letting people have a lot of space and giving them an opportunity to reconnect with nature. Something I thought I would probably benefit from myself. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes. Please, yes. Let's go. Obviously, lots of people are doing staycations, right? Have you noticed that this summer has been visibly a lot more busy than other years? As soon as we were told by the government that we could open on July the 4th, we were just totally inundated. We're not any busier because we're always full up, but we got busy spectacularly quickly. It is beautiful here. Like there's so much space. I've definitely been to campsites where there's not much going on. It's like a big field. <laughs> well, I think you're like most people. Most people's experience of camping is a bit more like a, a housing estate in a field. The grass is cut. Cars, dogs, groups, music, everything piles into this field and the farmer who owns the field tries to squeeze more and more people in to make more and more money. And we said, stop thinking about the money as the driver, think about the wildlife as the driver because that's actually the passion. Just down in this part here, we've got a board where we quite often get snakes. There's loads of blackberries, goldfinches, um, they're all over those. Loads of people don't see these trees. These are black, um, black fronds and these are slows. There's a dragonfly there. Can you see this dragonfly coming towards us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here. Can you see? Camera shot. <laughs> they're, they're off an R. Do you like hazelnuts? I like Nutella. Uh, it's a bit... Um... <laughs> We've been uh, two times already and, and we love it. As soon as we get here, it's relaxing, isn't it? You know. We've sort of, over the years sort of built up all the like the tent and the, you know this sort of outdoor living type stuff as well. I have yeah, to say yeah. this whole setup is really really nice. You do look like you've done this before. Yeah. But how much is a tent like that? Uh, well, it's about four hundred quid. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Sorry no, to interrupt you. You look very chilled out. The strawberries and a book there. The boys have gone on a out. walk. <laughs> but how many have you got? Three. Four. four, there's four boys. I had to cancel a holiday to South Africa, which is currently in lockdown. 
So uh, I said to them, and I said, I know this site, and let's see if they're open. Like, you've had to cancel the trip, and you've kind of adapted to everything, but how are you feeling at the moment, generally? I'll tell you what has really been nice here, is just being able to get out of the house. You know, I hate these campsites where you just sit on top of each other. So it's really nice that you've got these big meadow places and stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is, these are painted like, oh no, that's actually a red admiral, isn't it? And did you always plan to come on this trip or is it a trip planned post um, lockdown or...? Uh, so I was planning to come with another dad and then um, yeah, I persuaded Donna to come. Were you not very keen on it before? Are you not much of a camper? 30 years I've not camped before. So. <laughs> oh, okay. She's scared of frogs so she doesn't like, like going out. Oh right, well I hope you really enjoy it. Have you got her a nice tent? Yeah. Apparently so. I've not. We'll see. We'll let you know. <laughs> so, are you, are you by yourself? Are you with Yeah, Just by myself. By yourself? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And what made you come? Just a bit of peace. Yeah? Yeah. Um, stuck in the flat with my sister and my mum and whatever. Just like, I don't really have so much space to be by myself. So, I was like. <laughs> so, what did you do last night? I just made a fire and watched it for like three hours. I was so happy with myself. Oh, <laughs> cool. I mean, a lot of my friends are getting more into like just walking, like walking trips, cycling trips, trying to get their themselves more. Do you reckon you'd do this again? Oh, definitely. I'm already like, yeah, this is my local now. I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is the last episode in this series of A New Normal that we've been working on. Um, I want to say thank you so much to people for watching and getting in touch. It's been amazing having so much contact from our audience. Um, that has definitely helped me personally so much through lockdown. I hope that this has served in some way um, to offer some inspiration, like a bit of pos pos possibility and positivity and um, yeah, just something a bit different looking forward to the future. Um, please do like, comment and subscribe.